We've talked about the lies. We've talked about the truth. And now, the how. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Becoming Branches. My name is Adam Cook. With me, PDM, Pastor Dustin McKinney. This has been a challenging, awesome series on strongholds, sexual pornography, sexual addiction, um, the, the, the holiness and the purity of God is is outstanding when you read about it um, and how we fall so incredibly short, even in our best efforts, right? We are but filthy rags. Um, I've been encouraged by this. Um, we've talked about the lies. We've talked about the truth. What's next? What are we getting into? Well, I think you hit it on the head that we fall short Absolutely. in so many areas, including fashion. Uh, if you'll notice, Adam is rocking a bright pink shirt today. It's still February. That counts, right? We're, we're close enough to that Valentine's Day. I got you a present for Valentine's Day. I know we're late, but guys, I, I'm, I'm, I got it right here. A whole box of fresh donuts. And this is Rise and Roll Donuts in our local area. Um, <laughs> Thank you something. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> These are all yours, brother. You are a gentleman and a scholar. Yeah. I appreciate it Not very much. So Valentine's Day, that's yeah. gonna kind of bring in the love, the passion, all that good stuff with the shirt. That's right. Well, it's screaming. <laughs> it is screaming passion. <laughs> he I needs sunglasses is what he sees. Like, oh my gosh. So well, it, I love it. It almost you know, there's there was Moses' face when he came yeah. down. And this shirt is right I mean, right right under not yeah. quite there, but right under it. <laughs> Awesome. So anyway, sorry, I'm, I'm throwing us off course, okay. but we have been talking about strongholds, and so we are going to today get at some of those practical things that you can do in your life, in your home, to overcome some of these strongholds. And a lot of these practical things come right from Scripture, but also some of them have come through studies that I've done, or uh, we talked about every young man's battle or every man's battle freedom of Christ, some of these things, yep. uh, and studies that we've done. So we're going to dive right into it. And the first thing I want to say before we get into the practical, practical things uh, are really some reminders. Because if we're not rooted in Christ, none of these practical things will work. They may work for a short time, um, but you will find yourself right back under the, uh, the arm or the shackles of these strongholds. Mm -hmm. Freedom only exists in Christ and his truth. Mm -hmm. So we have to remember that. So the first verse I want to look at is our theme verse for our podcast. Uh, John 15, 5, Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Abide in me and you will bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nada. That's Nothing. Right. That's right. All right. So again, we have to be spending time in his presence. We have to be spending time in his word worship and prayer if we are not doing those things adam mm -hmm. we might as well stop on this list absolutely because it won't work that's right it won't work that's right and then the second kind of reminder is remembering that really this battle is one that takes place in our mind if we are not putting our 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 focus in the right place uh a lot of our efforts will be will misfire or will be um uh, not nearly as effective and so we've looked at 2 Corinthians 10, 4, and 5. I want to read specifically verse 5. We are destroying arguments and all arrogance raised up against the knowledge of God, and we are taking every thought captive yes. to the obedience of Christ. Um, so the lies that we believe are lies in our head. They're lies, lies in our thought life. And so that's where we need to concentrate and attack it with truth. Um, the third one is one I want, I want to spend just a little bit of time on. It's not something that we've talked about yet. But as we're, as we're doing this and we, and we recognize these strongholds really come from our own disobedience most of mm -hmm. the time, from our own sin. Um, we feel that conviction, not condemnation. Mm -hmm. Con conviction is good. Being sorrowful about your sin is good. Good. And I think that, just to stop it there, if you don't have conviction, that's scary. Yes. That is when you keep going to that next level because you, you don't feel anything. Right. Pastor Roger has mentioned from the pulpit uh, the cow story where you take a branding iron and you sear mm. the cow and the cow mm -hmm. can no longer fear, feel anything in that area. It right. can't feel anything at all. 
And I think there's so much callous of, and then you, you, you don't really feel bad about it. And that just layers and layers and layers. And all of a sudden things that you should be mortified about in your mm -hmm. Christian walk, you don't really think it's bad anymore. And all of a sudden you don't have fresh conviction. So guys, Pray for Amen. conviction yes. in Jesus' name. Amen. If you are doing things and you're like, I don't think that's that bad, that's a red flag. You're in a lot of trouble. So I want to just emphasize that conviction is good. Yeah, amen. And and how that conviction comes about, like uh, almost asking this question, what am I really sorry for? Mm -hmm. Because there is a deception, there is a lie about conviction where I am sorry that I got caught, or I'm sorry that I'm going through the consequences of my sin. Mm -hmm. And that, that, I mean, sure, yes. Um, but we really, when we have that true repentance, we come to the point where that worldly sorrow gets transformed into godly conviction, where it's like, yes, I got caught. Praise God I got caught, because what I'm sorry about is that I offended a holy God. Mm -hmm. God is holy. He does not stand for sin in our lives, and He will move heaven and earth to bring us back to Himself. And so when I realize all that God has done for me, all of who God is and His holiness, that's where it becomes, God, I am so sorry. I did not meet the standard. Mm -hmm. You have done everything for me, and the least I could do is operate in obedience and love for you, and I even messed that part up. Mm -hmm. um, so... Uh, and I think about, especially, we've talked about, you know, pornography, sexual sin. And I think about what God gives us as husbands in Ephesians chapter 5. Mm -hmm. When I read that, and I'm like, God, I fell short of this. Mm -hmm. Man, I am so sorry. Um, I think that's when that true repentance can come in and have that full change in our life. So that godly sorrow versus worldly sorrow. Ask yourself that question. What am I really sorry for? And then, like you said, pray for that godly conviction. And then, this is the important part. This is where we have to show true humility and we have to repent. We have to make that choice to say, I am not doing this anymore. Mm -hmm. Acts 3.19, repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, if you've been living in this stronghold, I'm sure you are weary. You may be tired. This thing is controlling your life. And God is offering a time of refreshing, a time of revival and renewal to come into your life. But we have to show humility. We have to humble ourselves and repent and turn away from ourselves. I think a lot of times people see that as the opposite effect, right? They're like, well, I can't go to God because I'm doing X, Y, and Z. Right. And it's the opposite. You need to run to God. Amen. Uh, I'm going to read out of 2 Chronicles 7, 13, and 14. This is ESV. I'm trying to get more into ESV. I'm Guys, I, I am... Close place in my heart. I, I, I am um, because I think the, the, uh, the biblical accuracy is important. Mm. And uh, I'm an NLT guy in my casual reading, but I've I really been convicted to to go a little bit deeper with, uh, with that word by word. Uh, anyway, I'm more of an NLT guy. So I want to read this, guys, because this is applicable. Um, when I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain or command the locusts to devour the land or send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from the heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Praise God. So that was said from our from from our senior pastor today, and it was really convicting and moving because there there's a lot of great stuff in there. However, there was a lot of ands. You have to and the next mm -hmm. part. And a lot of people don't do the and, mm -hmm. right? They stop at prayer. Prayer is excellent. We are called to pray, we are called to worship, but there's more that we need to do mm -hmm. that we're commanded to do to fulfill what the scripture just told us. But a lot of times we don't. Yeah. We stop with the prayer. Well, I prayed. Well, there was three or four more ands mm -hmm. um, with 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 all of this. With God is here to heal. He has commanded us in His Word. But what I was saying in the beginning is a lot of people run from God because because of a fear. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing when you know I don't want Dad to catch right. me. I don't want Dad. He's yes. gonna he's gonna. Well, God disciplines those whom He loves. Amen. Our earthly fathers and our mothers are to discipline those whom they love. Yeah. 
Um, so walk toward God. Don't be afraid of God. Mm. Um, and I, that's important. Amen. Amen. Well, you mentioned those ands, right? So the first thing was to humble yourself, mm -hmm. right? We have to humble ourselves. And Pastor used a quote this morning from the, the revival coming out of uh, Asbury College, Kentucky, right? Yeah, Kentucky. man. Um, radical humility. Mm -hmm. um, understanding, like you had mentioned, our place before God. Mm -hmm. uh, and that He is God and we are not. Yes. And we miss the standard. Uh, and then to seek His face and not just His hand. In fact, mm -hmm. your wife um, gave a devotion not too long ago that's kind of stuck in my head. That we want the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Right, we want all of God's blessings, mm -hmm. but we don't want the King. Yes, yeah, it's, it's the vending machine God. Yes, right. Oh, I just want Jeep. Oh, I just want this. I just want this. I just want stuff. I just want the, a blessing. A very Joel Olstein be mm -hmm. be uh, a prosperity thing. It's oh yeah. man, yeah. so much deeper. Yeah, we want to seek God's face. Mm -hmm. We want to know God personally, and then turn from our wicked ways. Mm -hmm. We need to repent. And so, a couple of things: if you are serious about repentance. Now we're going to dive into some of those practical things that you can do to turn away from this. And this is, I will tell you, I kind of have it divided into two things. A radical proactive plan and then a radical reactive plan. Because sometimes things pop up in our lives that we do not anticipate. And again, I'm talking specifically about sexual sin and pornography. Mm -hmm. However, many of these things can apply with lots of different strongholds. Alcohol, addiction, and these types of things. So Matthew 18, 9, Jesus is talking. He says, if your eye causes you to sin, he says, tear it out and throw it away. With an old spork. <laughs> yes. Maybe. Yes. No, no, <laughs> no tool tears out an eye <laughs> like a spork. <laughs> but, so if you don't have a spork handy. No, this is what Jesus is saying is we need to take bold action against sin. Because yes. sin is a is a virus, it is an infection that seeks to consume the whole of you. It is not satisfied by just hiding in the dark corners. That's where it will That's start, right. yep. and it will take over everything. And so we've yep. got to cut it out. Um, that sounded like cut it out. Uncle uh, from Full Je House. Uh, Je uh, uh, Jesse. It was Uncle Jesse. No, it was the other one, the uh, blonde-haired one. Yeah, cut it out. Uncle Dave? Dave. Uh, no, I, Uncle it? Dave, that might be yeah, it. Yeah, wouldn't it? Let us know. Leave a comment. We get, we get, we keep getting it wrong. So anyways, here's the proactive, <laughs> radical war plan. Um, the first thing is you have to identify your triggers. When and where is this taking place? Um, because typically it will happen in um, a uh, consistent manner as far as, well, it's always when you know my wife leaves for work and I have 20 minutes by myself. So that's typically when it happens. Yeah. Uh, this happens when I am watching a sports game and I see the cheerleaders jumping up and down and now my thoughts go somewhere and that is my trigger. So you need to identify those triggers. Really ask yourself, when is this taking place and what vehicle am I using? So is this typically, am I watching pornography on my cell phone? Is this happening on my laptop? And then we're going to concentrate on those areas. So identify when and where this is uh, taking place. And then it's going to sound like obvious. We need to remove those triggers. And I know some of this is going to sound like, Dustin, you're crazy. Like, that's just ridiculous. We don't have to go that far. Yes, you do. <laughs> I just want to reiterate the importance, brother, of, of that first trigger. Mm -hmm. The importance of it. And by the way, it was Uncle Joey. That's right, yeah. Uncle Joey. I wanted to get that in there Appreciate because Sorry, that Uncle was consuming Joey. my mind because it, it would just <laughs> scream, Uncle Joey. Anyway, I know that's irrelevant, but it was important. <laughs> anyway, have you guys seen like, a, uh, there's a, a guy on YouTube named Mark Rover. Um, he's an awesome engineer. He does these courses. And what, what I want to, my point is, if the first trigger, if the first ball doesn't hit the exact trigger, none of the rest of the course is going to work. Right. It won't. The first initial trigger of cheerleader, of something you're looking to. Here's my one of my things that I had to get rid of was Instagram because I followed a lot of workout fitness people. And unfortunately, uh, fitness models are on there doing workouts. And it's, wait a minute, I'm not even watching a workout anymore. Mm -hmm. This is so past a squat or a bench press. This yeah. is now a sin. Yeah. And there's a trigger warning. And it might not happen right away. It could be a trigger that happened at 8.30 in the morning. And then at 2 o'clock, you ignored yes. it. All of a sudden, you didn't get rid of it. 
and that's still in the back of your mind. Yeah. The so there you go. So it went down the perver proverbial ramp, and now it's hitting all the other triggers, and all of a sudden we all we all know the outcome. So I just wanted to sorry to stop you. No, I just wanted great. the importance of that first trigger warning yeah. to flee from it, to shut Amen. the game off, to turn off your phone, to close your laptop, to call a brother. Amen. Get help. Don't just yeah. sit there. Flee. Good stuff, man. And so. What I'm going to tell you, this is my own personal saying, but you have to get the Mountain Dew out of the refrigerator. What you I should mean, do that anyway. That's yes. gross. So we did a series on discipline earlier. You should check it out. But if, if I'm on a diet, okay, and Mountain Dew is in my house. Yes, cue the donuts. <laughs> if Mountain Dew is in my house... I can't kid myself. Yeah. I will drink it. Right. That's why I gave those to you. Yeah. <laughs> you got rid, of your, got rid of your Mountain Dew. And so what I'm saying is you can't allow that stuff to be lying around and just think, no, I'm not going to go to it. Mm -hmm. You will. Absolutely. You will. And so this is where I'm, where I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw some bold challenges at you. If you have a smartphone and over and over again you are watching pornography on your smartphone, it's time for a flip phone. Get rid of the cell phone. The That's cell right. phone is not worth all of the rewards and things Christ, Christ has for you in heaven in the next life. Remember, this life is so temporary. Mm -hmm. You brought this up last episode. Like e Eternity is so much bigger, but we don't yeah. think in those terms. Finite minds cannot yeah. comprehend it. Also, if you, for some reason, oh, I can't get a flip phone because of my work. I get it. There are programs on there, yes. and there are porn blockers on there. And give someone in your church the password. Give your mm -hmm. pastor the password. Give your wife the password. Take this situation out of your hands because you're right. If this box of donuts was in my house, there's a 100% chance I'd have donuts. It's not because I want donuts. It's because they're there in my face and I'm going to eat a donut. Um, guys, the importance of this to not sit in the proverbial water, the frog, it's getting hotter and hotter yeah. and hotter. Don't get in the pot to begin with. It's, uh, well, you, you, I've you, been burnt so many times because I sat <laughs> there like, a, like an <laughs> idiot. Yeah. <laughs> That's what frog sounds like, too. Is it? it? Let me hear your frog no. impression. No, I don't have one. You know this. I'm terrible at impressions. Okay, I almost did Kermit the Frog, but I don't want to digress that much. All right. Well, I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. But you brought up one mm -hmm. of my other proactive strategies is accountability. Um, whether it's through a person, which I highly recommend, but there are incredible programs out there. One that I've used is Covenant Eyes. Yep. Uh, it's a great program where um, you have someone who's accountable who can see screenshots on your phone. In fact, there was a time in my life where I had my wife download a children's app on my phone like for where your kids can only text through this app mm -hmm. so you can see all their text messages. I, that's what I needed. I said, you're going to download, download this on my app. It doesn't allow me to delete any text messages. Any, any letter that I type, my wife can see. And so that was, many people will say that, be like, that's ridiculous. That means you have no trust. No, I trust God's word that my heart is deceptively <laughs> wicked. Yeah. It is absolutely wicked, and I know what my heart is capable of. And so I want to put up strong boundaries to say, no more. I don't want to do this. So we have to be proactive. When and where is this happening? Identify your triggers. Get rid of those triggers in your life and, and then get some real, real accountability in your life. Mm -hmm. And so those kind of go towards those pro proactive measures. And, you know, another thing, too, like I said, if this happening when you're alone, let's say you have 20 minutes after your wife leaves for work that you have, sometimes that means don't be alone. Like, Go with your wife. If you're going in opposite directions, meet up with a brother in Christ and say, hey, man, uh, I, need to, I need to be on the phone with you. I'm going to leave work 20 minutes early, and you're going to talk to me the whole way there mm -hmm. um, because I need that accountability. Absolutely. And so those are um, bold measures that you have to take. Reactive, because sometimes those things, you've, you've done your proactive plan, and then you're driving down the road, and then there's a, there's a girl who's jogging. Right? You didn't necessarily anticipate that that was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And now you want to stare, you want to look in the rearview mirror as you're driving by, and you want to look at those things. Yep. So a and that's how a progressive commercial starts. That's right. You're right. Driving with mayhem like me, uh -huh. and all of a that's sudden, right. and then you yep. get something. That's exactly right. It's a commercial right there. And so uh, I'm going to look at Job. Actually, Job uh, gives us a really good idea in this. So Job 31.1, I have made a covenant with my eyes not to look lustfully at a woman. And so uh, the creators of every man's battle came up with this concept of 
bouncing the eyes. Now it sounds silly, but I have done this, and it really explain does. it. Explain okay, it for someone who has like I have no idea right. what that means. So, um, <laughs> for and the uh, best way to do this is that my eyes are like made of rubber, and anything lustful is also made of rubber. So as soon as I see it, I don't allow my eyes a second to look. Gotcha. I immediately bounce my eyes. And I start, and the best thing to do, especially if you're in a group of people, is to start a conversation with somebody. Gotcha. All right, so let's say I'm walking, you know, I'm walking down with my family, I'm walking with a buddy, or even, even if I'm walking by myself, this, this can still happen, and I see something where my eyes want to lust, immediately, I don't give it a second, I bounce my eyes, I'm like, Adam, how about them Colts? <laughs> gotcha. And I start talking, and I'm, I'm not going to allow my eyes a second to have um, any pleasure in that, I'm taking that thought, I'm putting it uh, to the obedience of Christ, and I'm not even going to go there. And it has to be that bold of a reaction. Yes. Because there's the first trigger. If you shut it down immediately, awesome. Keep walking. Yeah. But we don't. So many times, I just want to, you almost like, you can feel your body wanting to look again. Um, it's, we are so carnal and sinful. Yeah. It's it's ridiculous. it's ridiculous. It is. Our hearts are so wicked. Second thing, reactive, uh, purple elephant prayers. Uh, what do I mean by this? Uh, Adam, if I say, don't think of a purple elephant, what's the first thing you think of? Those donuts. <laughs> uh, because <laughs> A purple elephant. Right. All right. This, again, uh, is just our human nature. We're told to do something, so immediately we want to do the opposite thing. Um, so... Uh, when I see something or I think of something I'm not supposed to think, often we'll, we'll say to ourselves, don't think about that. Don't think about that. And really what we're doing is we're making ourselves think about it we're just all the more. Amplifying it. Yes, we're just yeah. amplifying yeah. it. So instead, um, go right to prayer. And what I mean by the purple elephant is don't say I'm not going to do that. So instead, I'm going to focus on God's goodness. I'm going to go to prayer and say, God, you have power over this. This does not have to control my life. I love you, God, your goodness. You have promises for me, for those who love you and are called according to your purpose, and we can continue to go. So, purple elephant prayers. That's another good one. Uh, and then finally, we've already talked about this, but 1 Corinthians 6.18, flee from sexual immorality, literally, not figuratively, run. Yes. Uh, we saw Joseph do this uh, in the Old Testament. He literally ran out of the house. Um, when he was being uh, trying to be seduced, left his garment and boom, I'm gone. Out. Yep. Uh, and so well, that's sometimes what we need to do. Let's say, man, I, I, I'm bouncing my eyes isn't working. Uh, I I don't have anyone to talk to. Get out of the situation. Get out. Literally run if that's what you need to do. Mm -hmm. But you got to get out. Amen. You got to get out. Well, guys. Take these steps and you can go back over these last videos and, and get your list together. And I cannot stress the importance of triggers, the importance mm -hmm. of God, give me a fresh conviction. Um, the thing, how great our God is, you pray for something. He's not going to abandon you in this. He's a good if, father. Lord, I need, I need discernment on this. I need wisdom on this. I, God's going to give it to you. Yeah. But he is going to put you in the opportunity, in the scenario to use what you pray for. Yeah. And that's where you've got to... Bounce those eyes, call a brother, be accountable for each other, set up locks on your phone, or if you can and your job allows you and the situation allows you, get a different phone. Um, there, There's things out there that can help us. The Word of God is steadfast on what it means to be sexually pure. Um, I have gotten a lot out of this as a former, like I said, a former uh, porn addict. This is so important. And guys, being a former porn addict, I still use this list Mm -hmm. Just keep on the straight and narrow because guess what? Just because I have Jesus has delivered me from this does not mean mm -hmm. Satan isn't right there to try right. to trip me up at every second, every look, every person at the gym. It's it's uh, stay steadfast. Yeah. Amen. So I, I hope you stay with us. We're going to continue to talk a little bit about strongholds, but we're going to go uh, next week into some generational strongholds. Like, man, what do I do if I have a family who's been alcoholics their whole life? What, what does that look like? We're also going to talk a little bit about... Um, demonic strongholds mm -hmm. like you know we I've known individuals who have you know delved into witchcraft and then they tried to get out of that mm -hmm. and they went through some really crazy persecution yeah. and things like that and so um, we're gonna talk about these things coming up so stay with us but we we're praying for you we know that through Christ we can overcome strongholds so we appreciate you stopping by thank you so much join us for more on becoming branches <laughs>